Although China has a vast territory, it suffers from desertification, and large tracts of land have lost their original value. The increasingly serious desertification trend has made China have to do something. In this way, batch after batch of sand control workers dedicated their lives to the desert and started the Desert Transformation Plan. With the unremitting efforts of the Chinese, the first desert in China that is about to disappear has appeared, which is the Muas Desert. On April 22, 2020, the Shanxi Provincial Forestry Bureau announced that its decertified land treatment rate has reached 93.24%, which means that the Muas Desert is about to disappear from the map. Besides, the annual sediment transport of the Yellow River has decreased by 400 million tons. Moreover, the sand and dust weather has been reduced from more than 20 days per year to less than 10 days. Most importantly, the desert area is still shrinking with an annual rate of 1.6%. If the trees planted by people over the years are connected at 1 meter intervals, the length is enough to circle the equator 54 times. So, what did the Chinese do to make it the first desert in China to disappear? Hi, everyone. Welcome to Hot Topics Time, a channel to interpret news from a new perspective and explore the wisdom behind the news. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel, which is the encouragement that we can create more videos. Okay, let's continue the topic we are talking about. First, let's take a look at the historical changes of the Muas Desert. The Muas Desert is also called the Ordo Sandy Land. In Mongolian, Muas means a place where no grass grows. But the Muas Desert is not a natural desert. In ancient times, its desert area was very small, most of which were oases. According to historical records, in about the 5th century AD, it was called the Pearl Outside the Great Wall. It was a paradise for nomads at that time, with abundant water and grass, and many Huns lived here. However, with the continuous increase of the population and the continuous wars for years, the phenomenon of soil erosion here has become more and more serious, the surface vegetation has become less and less, and the quicksand has become more and more. According to archaeological research data, 3,500 to 2,200 years ago, the Ordo's bronze culture appeared in the Muas Desert, which was mainly based on nomadic farming. And according to the measurement results such as the content of fossil carbon in the soil layer, it can be concluded that the soil condition of the Muas Desert was very good at that time. Regardless of the fertilizer rate, it is impossible to lack water. This situation continued until the Xinguan period of the Tang Dynasty. Since the middle of the Tang Dynasty, the Muas Desert began to embark on the road of desertification. In just a hundred years, the environment of this oasis, which was once lush with water and grass, continued to deteriorate. The reason for this is that in the fourth year of Xinguan period of Tang Dynasty, the Eastern Turks surrendered and settled here, causing serious damage to the grassland under the influence of long-term overgrazing. Since then, the Muas Desert has been expanding at a steady rate. After the founding of the People's Republic of China, the situation in the Muas Desert is still not optimistic. According to public data, the forest coverage rate was only 0.9%. So, what happened to the Muas Desert, and it became the first desert in China that is about to disappear? The governance of the Muas Desert actually started very early. In the 1960s, China put the project of transforming the desert on the agenda. In the past few decades, both the government and the people have contributed to the desertification control in their own way. Since the 1950s, the establishment of the Shanbei Sand Prevention and Afforestation Bureau marked the beginning of people's control of the Muas Desert. In the beginning, the main measures to control the Muas Desert were stabilization of sands and irrigation. At that time, the communication conditions were very poor, and the access roads were inconvenient, so sand control was extremely difficult. In 1959, 
the Yulin government implemented a policy of subsidies for sand control and established a state-run forest farm so that sand control was no longer limited to stabilization of sands and irrigation, but to mobilize people to plant trees together. In this way, a large number of farmers have been to this barren land with saplings and began to plant trees. Under the persistence of generations of sand control workers, the windbreak forest belt in the Muas Desert has been built and remarkable results have been achieved. During this period, people will not only plant trees, but also use grass squares to conserve water in some areas that have not yet achieved transformation. Now, when China looks back at the history of the gradual greening of the Muas Desert, it will be found that some things are actually 30% predestined, 70% earned, and victory can only belong to those who persistently tried. The 30% predestined mentioned here is the natural conditions of the Muas Desert. As we have said above, it was an oasis with rich water and grass in history, and it still preserves some natural lakes. Not only that, the groundwater level in the Muas Desert is also relatively high, which means that it is easier to plant trees. After all, if you dig a little deeper, the sand at the bottom is relatively moist. As for the 70% earned, it refers to people's dedication to the desertification control project. During the 60 years of sand control, countless unswerving people have emerged. Today's Muas Desert has not only become greener and greener, but also brought extremely high economic benefits to the local area. The double effect sand control and poverty control have been combined. Taking Yulin City as an example, after achieving certain results in sand control, the local area entered a stage of comprehensive development of ecological construction and established a property rights system for decertified land assets, allowing more enterprises to enter the field of sand control. At present, there are more than 50 sand control enterprises in Yulin, with a total operating area of more than 1 million mu. In addition, the local area also attaches great importance to scientific and technological governance. The local forestry department has been exploring how to scientifically control sand and find more suitable planting varieties. The chairman of the Shinmu City Ecological Protection and Construction Association mentioned that the initial sand control was very difficult because there are still many unexpected factors in planting trees in the desert. In this case, he visited many scientific research institutes, hoping to get help. In the process, he understood that the key to planting trees in the desert is to retain water first, otherwise, no matter how much irrigation is applied, the saplings will be difficult to survive. Later, not only did the sand control succeed, but also the long-handled almond seeds from his sand control base went into space with the Chinese astronauts. So far, the Mu U.S. desert may become the first desert in China to disappear, all of which are inseparable from the efforts of the people. This also tells us that we must respect nature and learn to live in harmony with nature, otherwise we will pay more in the future. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas with other people. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. Hot Topics Time, time to explore the wisdom behind the news, we will see you in the next video.